And now it's time for another edition of What Would Jello Do? These are trying times, my friends, and it's getting harder and harder to find pain relief or even lights at the end of the tunnel unless you look and get a little more creative and maybe even start your own fires. For one thing, this whole situation is ripe for a worldwide wave of good old-fashioned crime. Not with guns, not with bombs. I'm talking about creative crime. I've always had a soft spot in my heart for creative crime. When you think about it, crime is the last unspoiled, uh, unspoiled art form left on earth. No art school teaches crime. There are no cookie cutter critic damaged ways to properly present crime at crime galleries. Sell crime advertising. No. Every aspiring crime artist must get creative on their own. Look how one inspired patriotic citizen completely torpedoed and sank Mitt Romney just by leaving their camera phone on as he condescendingly and viciously trashed that 47% of Americans who he said think they're entitled to health care. They think they're entitled to food. Remember that one? Well, now with Blotosaurus Rex, who has to know he's in way over his head, lying awake at night, fuming into his phone, trapped in his own collapsing reality show, wide open for pranks. Trumpenstein, the great Glotesby. This Richie Rich crossed with Cartman from South Park. This Kim Jong Donald child emperor with that giant goofy ass glued on comb over instead of clothes is so goddamn immature and sensitive that one rubber band, one spit wad can send him into an all night bender of broken TV screens and psycho tweets. Therefore, we should all join in. This is the guy who claimed like a spoiled child that the whole election was rigged because Saturday Night Live made fun of him. This is the guy whose fire and fury threats toward North Korea got compared to old Slayer lyrics in no less than the New York Times. This guy, who is so insanely jealous of Kim Jong-un and Vladimir Putin, he demanded his own North Korean Russian style military parade, complete with all those missiles on the trucks and tanks and everything and swarms of marching soldiers down Pennsylvania Avenue during his inauguration. In a rare moment of wisdom, the Pentagon declined. As soon as he bitches and moans about the NFL and players kneeling in silent peaceful protest, peaceful football players, how do you do that one? To cover up the ongoing Katrina side he helped create in Puerto Rico, the whole sports star protest just mushrooms overnight to the point where even the owner of the Dallas Cowboys is linking arms with his players on the field just to torment and annoy King Donald. What does this mean? It means we can all start Saturday night living the President Baby Man again and again and again. Remember that prank phone call on Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin where the guy who recorded it claimed he was one of the Koch brothers and Walker believed him as he gleefully dished on how he and the other Koch head puppet governors in Michigan, Pennsylvania, Pence in Indiana, and yes, Kasich in Ohio, we're going to destroy everything from health care to unions to schools to every last pollution law. Just let them eat flint. We could call Trump and claim we're Angela Merkel or claim we're Netanyahu or claim we're killed John un or at least Dennis Rodman, claim we're Putin and threaten to call in all those loans that have Trump and his monster children on the hook for who knows how many billions of dollars to Russian banks, thus to the Russian mob, 
Come on, comrade Trumpsky. It's time to let me conquer Ukraine and Latvia and Estonia and Lithuania, or it won't just be my best prostitutes in the world pissing all over your Cheeto-encrusted blabbermouth face. <laughs> Here's another one. I think I said this in one of these before, but apply for jobs. The whole Trump regime is so incompetent, they haven't even gotten around to filling literally thousands of crucial and important jobs up at the State Department and a lot of, like, right below subcabinet positions, let alone judges to nominate. They haven't been able to fill them, in part because they can't find people who are willing to work with them. Forty-seven ambassadorships are open. You would think with the flashpoints going on, we'd have an ambassador to South Korea, wouldn't you? We don't have an ambassador to South Korea right now. We don't have an ambassador to Afghanistan. I think there's one nominated, but most of these haven't even been nominated. There's 47 of them. No ambassador to Russia, although that may change. No ambassador to the European Union. No ambassador to Saudi Arabia. No ambassador to Cuba or Germany or India. Or Syria, although I don't think I'd want that posting any more than I'd want the vacant seat in Yemen. No ambassador to Venezuela. No wonder we're so angry and of them can't understand them. No ambassador to Qatar. No ambassador to Bahrain. No ambassador to Turkey. There's 10 different sub-ambassadors in the UN, and we've filled three of them so far. No ambassador to Egypt, no ambassador to Argentina, no ambassador to South Africa, or Norway, or Sweden, or Ireland. You get the picture. I mean, Dennis Rodman can only fill South Korea. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, believe me, it'll be just like a big, beautiful wall that... I could do a better job in any of those ambassadorial positions than just having nobody there. Guaranteed. You know, so with the same lack of background checks and slipshod stuff going on that gave us Manafort and Michael Flynn and, for that matter, hotshot Middle East peace negotiator Jared Kushner, you could show up all mohawk, studs, pierced, and tattooed as the new ambassador to Belgium. Cut out a picture of Hustler, cut a model out and claim it's you, and apply for an internship at the White House. Remember when a guy got all those so-called alt-right neo-Nazis to wave Russian flags at their CPAC convention? They'd handed them, not telling them they were the Russian flag? Another really cool prank. And most of you know, don't you, that the Don has never bothered reading books and only reads and watches tabloided out media and only for coverage about himself. I mean, Trump is so goddamn delusional, wouldn't it be great to hack those so-called propaganda documents, his minion are required to bring him twice each day, according to Vice, filled with nothing but favorable coverage of King Donald since he received the last one a few hours earlier. Or is somebody hacking it already? This is the same guy who claimed in one of his ghost-written books that Madonna hit on him. Maybe all those dick-sucking, genuflecting calls he claimed he got patting him on his comb over from the Boy Scouts or even the President of Mexico that he later had to admit never happened. What do you want to bet it was actually some bored underlings two doors down in the White House? Hey, Ivanka, listen to this one. Ooh, that's so funny, Jared. He fell for it again. Jared, weren't you supposed to be working on the Middle East? Or magically solving all our drug addiction problems? <laughs> or maybe these phone calls are actually just voices in the mad Donald's head. I'm well familiar with chronic schizophrenia from my close friendship with and very dear friend and frequent house guest, Wesley Willis. I mean... He had what he called his demons nipping at him, yelling at him in his head 24-7 when he was the center of attention or playing music or had his headphones on ear-splittingly loud listening to death metal or gangster rap. 
you know, he forgot about him for a while and that was okay. But when you saw the twitching going on, you knew he was starting to get these demons again. Demon just told me to rob a bank. Demon just called me stupid. Demon just called me a bum and told me to put a gun to my head. You know, this was very real and very serious. Not easy being Wesley. For all we know, Trump's demons might be happy demons. You're doing a great job, Donald. The women all love you, Donald. Say rah, give me a headbutt, Donald. Give me another headbutt, Donald. I've been speculating for years that that goofy-ass, stolen, Billy Idol glue do the Don parades around in sticks out there really to hide a folded-up white hood he puts under there, or maybe just his devil horns. But is all that ridiculous hair really just to hide a forehead callus, just like Wesley Willis had from all those headbutts? Hey, kids. Can you say 25th Amendment? Okay, Donald, we'll give you a headbutt. Say rock.